this is a day that, that uh, I'll always remember. Uh, I can remember 12 years ago when I signed at Loyola, and I'll remember today uh, as, as my last day as a Laker. When he retired from basketball in 1994, James Worthy had left his mark as one of the greatest finishers in NBA history. He joined Magic Johnson, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, and Byron Scott to form the game's most lethal fast break. It was a dynamic attack that came to be known by just one word, Showtime. James Worthy. Showtime was coming down. You know, you got to shake, rattle, and roll first, and then don't even look. Nice. Oh, oh, baby. It was all the movie stars. It was Hollywood. It was magic. It was alley -oop. It was just a fast-paced showtime. Down the middle of magic, right side to Worthy. That looks like the Lakers. He played the game uh, kind of like a, a Jerry Rice would uh, play football. Magic was a quarterback. You knew it was coming, but you know, he, he ran the pattern and he ran the route so good that it was difficult to stop him. But Worthy's journey began far from the spotlight in the small town of Gastonia, North Carolina. After starring in high school, he teamed up with Michael Jordan at the University of North Carolina. James became an All-American and helped lead the Tar Heels to the national championship. The Lakers selected Worthy with the first overall pick in the 1982 draft. But in one of his first moments on the game's biggest stage, James received a hard-earned lesson in playoff pressure. With the Lakers on the verge of taking command in the 1984 finals, he made a crucial mistake. Back over to Worthy and it's picked off. Goes to him and he lays it off and in. It's all tied up. I had a very uh, dramatic learning experience in, in game two when I threw the ball away in the last 13 seconds. So, and then we lost in seven games. His celebrated teammates, Kareem and Magic, had already proven themselves under pressure. And now Worthy would spend the next few years doing the same, showing that he too could be relied upon to deliver in the clutch. Every championship team needed a James Worthy. It was willing to play the role as third guy behind Kareem and Magic. Worthy would emerge as a star in his own right, bringing finesse and explosiveness to the small forward position. I really enjoy the physics from point A to point B in the game and learning how to take the first three steps out of the blocks and have that edge. The Lakers with three timeouts left, no 20. The Hawks with two, no 20. Oh, Worthy loses Wilkins underneath with a slam dunk. He had the quick spin move. He had the drop dip. He had the quick, he had the quick little, uh, almost little flick shot coming across the middle. Little runner. Worthy, defense by McHale now. James would, uh, you know, literally leave people in the dust. With James playing a major role, the Lakers won NBA titles in 1985 and 87, but he knew he would have to lift his game even higher after Pat Riley issued a bold challenge to his team. And I'm guaranteeing everybody here, next year we're gonna win it again. Back to back hadn't been accomplished in over 19 years, and that was our challenge. And this was a point where I said, okay, now it's my turn, give me the ball and let's, let's go on, and I wanted it and Worthy would grasp his opportunity, taking it upon himself to help the Lakers repeat. He starred in their seven game victories against Utah and Dallas in the 88 Western Conference playoffs. It was time for a new kid on the block to step up and, and take control, and that was the first time I've ever really done that. And in the NBA Finals against Detroit, James would continue to elevate his performance. In the ultimate pressure cooker, game seven, he rose to the occasion with his greatest game ever. Finishing with a triple-double, he led the Lakers to their second straight championship. Worthy was named MVP of the finals and sealed his reputation as Big Game James. James Worthy gets his 33rd point. I love James Worthy, I, everything he stood for in his career. The Lakers are back-to-back -back champions, the first team to do so in 19 years. We knew that this would really uh, clarify that we weren't the greatest team that ever played. 